Sturdy? Maybe. Dangerous? Hardly. These are the latest state-of-the-art animatronic robots. They have sensors that ensure that they only attack each other, never the guests. Here's a look at the new Super 7, The Simpsons Ultimates, Robot Scratchy. Inspired by the Itchy and Scratchy Land episode of The Simpsons, this made-to-order 7-inch fully articulated Ultimates robot Scratchy figure comes with an ample selection of accessories, as well as must-have theme park souvenirs like the coveted Bort Novelty license plate. Each Ultimates figure comes packaged in a deluxe slipcase window box. Collect the whole first wave of Simpsons Ultimate figures. Robots that go run amok? What's the chance of that ever happening? Before we get a closer look, though, at the Simpsons Ultimates Robot Scratchy, let's grab the tape measure. And don't worry, I'll we'll bring in the other figures that we've looked at up to this point as well, for you guys can see the differences in size. Scratchy, though, by far is the tallest of the batch, and I'll show you guys that more in a moment. But in, either way, though, Robot Scratchy stands, factoring, of course, the tips of his ears, about an 8-inch tall figure, or that works out to be about 20 centimeters in height. Also, for your consideration, here's what Robot Scratchy looks like with the previously looked at Robot Itchy, who has still loose legs. Here's what the figure also looks like with Mo, and the first figure that we had a look at here, here's what they look like with Deep Space Homer. We'll maybe put Homer over here, grab a little bit of space in between, we'll put Mo uncomfortably in between the two robots that are about to go run amok. Yeah, you can see that in this case, Scratchy is the tallest of the four figures that we've looked at. We still, though, have to have a look at Poochie. His review will be coming up shortly. As for the accessories that come include with Robot Scratchy, my favorite by far is the fact that they actually included the personalized license plate of Bort. Bart, of course, having no luck whatsoever finding his own name, the child then next to him says, Mommy, Mommy, they have a license plate that says Bort. She says, Run along, Bort, and then, of course... The gentleman behind her says, excuse me, are you talking to me? No, my son's name is also Bort. <laughs> I think that was actually Conan O'Brien's uh, joke. She could really tell some of the stuff that he was writing for the earlier Simpsons episodes. And that was by far one of my favorite things. The license plate, though, is very thick. And my only guess is the reasoning why they made it as thick as they did was when removing it from the tray. I don't know if you guys could actually see this or not. I had a real hard time to actually pull this out. And maybe if they had made it of a thinner material, it probably would have bent or broke. I mean, it's made of a fairly soft plastic, certainly not something I would imagine would be breaking anytime soon. You can see as well, it does say itchy and scratchy land just above that. Come along, boards. Put that to the side. The figure also comes in clue with the tiny little baby axe that we see in the parade. Cute little axe that's trying to catch up with all the more adult axes. Unfortunately, though, this axe does not stand at all. I was hoping, if anything, there may have been some articulation in the legs. But if you get it out of the packages just stock as it is, the tiny little axe does fall backwards. There's no way. You would have to heat this up, I would imagine. I didn't want to tamper with this at all and just claim to you guys that this is all something that stands fine on its own. And then you guys call me a liar. No, just getting this out of the box as it is. You put it down. The axe does fall over. So I will have to probably heat this up, I think, with either a hairdryer Maybe just bring the legs for, if I can bring them forward, it wouldn't be so bad. But when you get them out, it's just not the right, it's not right pose. The axe is going to fall. I, I hope at some point we do actually get larger size axes. But am I, why, why do I want larger size axes and all the other things that are in the parade? I don't know. I don't know. Just the fact we get a little baby axe maybe. But we do get that. Uh, then we, of course, we get a lot of things that were, actually, that's not true. That's not true. Let me stop before I say that. We get ourselves the knife. And why I did stop myself was this was actually not something that came included with uh, Itchy. Itchy didn't come included with a knife. So you do get that. But then these things are all things, I don't know if you can actually see it or not. These are all the things that came included already with, with Itchy. Uh, you get yourself the Tommy gun. And I'm just going to reach off to the side here and grab the Tommy gun that came included with uh, Itchy. They seem to be identical. So exactly the same. The figure also comes included with Chainsaw and Chainsaw. Itchy. Scratchy. Exactly the same. This one almost looks like it's a little bit darker in color, but I think it's more just me just trying to see some differences between them. I think they're identical. The figure also comes included with the axe. Now, Scratchy, uh, just grab Itchy's here. Itchy and Scratchy's look to be the same, although it looks almost as if, again, is it maybe just my eyes playing tricks on me? Maybe it is. 
This almost looks like it's a bigger head on the axe than this one here, but I guess if I was to line them two, if I line the two up, no, they are the same. This just, I don't know, doesn't this one look a little bit bigger than this one here? Handles also seem to be exact same as well. And then, of course, the figure comes included with the mallet. Uh, mallet, again, here's the one that came included with Itchy. Identical, identical. I'm not even going to say this time around that they are different in size, as I clearly know that they're not, that's not the case. So you get all those things, but again, still the same issues. The figure has a real hard time to hold any of these. Luckily, at least for the joints on Scratchy so far, knock on, I don't have anything wood right now. I'm going to knock on my forehead here. Yeah, okay. Uh, 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 unlike, unlike Itchy, I actually have more tighter joints here found on Scratchy. I don't know the longevity of that, though. That's probably going to start to diminish the, the more I'm actually moving the things on the figure. Because, of course, in order for them to pull off the look that the, these characters have in the cartoon, sacrifices have to be made when it comes to the joints. And unfortunately, just only single hinge joints on the knees, the ankles, and the tops of the thighs mean that eventually, well, maybe not the case right now, Scratchy is going to start to get loose legs, just like Itchy did before. I guess one thing we can also do too as well, figure also comes and includes some swappable hands. I did already swap this hand for th this hand. This is what it would have looked like before. I don't know if you can, you can see the difference between the two. Does these not look like witches' cauldrons? Flipping it upside down? Maybe not. But this one does not hold anything. I mean, I guess you could say with the grip like this, you can kind of have it holding the mallet. You can kind of just balance the mallet in between the fingers and the, I guess, would be the serviceable thumb. But I find most of the hands, actually most of the options, these gripping hands with the grip more closer together seem to do a better job of holding everything. So I don't even think that this was even needed in the first place. I'm going to move those to the side. But yeah, I wanted to show you. I think in the beginning of the review, I did have them holding the Tommy gun. Tommy gun basically just sits into his hand. Uh, you can hold the chainsaw. But again, like the chainsaw, it's not the easiest. I find it actually helps if you just lean it, rest it sort of against those fingers. That does an okay job, I suppose, of holding the chainsaw. And then you can do the exact same thing. Let's grab the axe. The axe just slides then into the hands like that. And then, of course, because you've got the bend in the elbow, you know, you can have the arms a little bit further up. But so far, again, it's okay. Those joints are going to start to develop looseness. Oh, are they really? They are. I mean, I, the more I'm looking at my itchy, he's literally getting loose as I'm looking at him. That doesn't sound so right. Anyways, though, let's go ahead and take the axe out of his hand. Uh, the one other thing that comes also included with Scratchy is a swappable head. Now, it may not even look like there's anything different between the two. You may even think I'm just trying to be a fibber face. I'm not. I'm not. Actually, if you look at it from the side, see there's a seam line right here. And this was also the case when we looked at Itchy. It's also here found on this alternate head sculpt too because this one has a removable faceplate. Unlike, though, Itchy, which we can go ahead and just put this figure down here for a second. I should have had this more properly properly prepared. But uh, when we had a look at Itchy, I'm just going to put the two halves of his head together. It, it stood out a little bit more that obviously this was a top of a head that removed. But if I was to then compare it with the one we get from Scratchy, it actually does look like a fully developed head. So you really could then use this head sculpt all the time, all the time on the neck of Scratchy and then simply just decide later on that you want to remove the faceplate, which I'm going to do right now. The faceplate simply just detaches. There we go. And inside you can also see very large eyeballs and the working components of what would make Scratchy run or run amok. Uh, again, like this attaches, but it's it's a very tight, lots of friction happening here when you're trying to put the two pieces together, but it does actually look finished. So for all intents and purposes, there's no real reason why I need to actually have it displayed with this. I can more definitely just to have it displayed with this head sculpt instead. Changing out the heads, pretty easy. I mean, I shouldn't really, I shouldn't d diminish it, down downplay it like it's super easy. It's hard at first when you first remove the head. And if you're having a tough time to do that, just heat this a little bit with a hairdryer but it pops off. And actually, while I do have the head off right now, I did mention in the review of Scratchy that the joint for the neck actually hinges back and forth only this way. Not true. In fact, it was only just because the neck was really loose or really tight on Itchy, lo looser here on Scratchy, that you can in fact rotate it forward. So it's not always going to be permanently side to side. You can actually rotate it and have it front to back also as well. So let's go ahead and pop now uh, Scratchy's head with the removable faceplate in place. And again, this is going to involve a little bit more pressure on my part to get that in place. And again, like if you were to look at it, none would be the wiser to think that you ever even changed the head in the first place. The colors are actually quite good on both of them. And yeah, maybe you could see a little more of this seam line on now the head have changed out, but it's pretty close. In fact, going to definitely, I think, stick with this one for right now. Uh, in this case, you've actually got the tongue sticking out here. It's 
of the same similar color. I mean, we're going to just bring in the decapitated head of Itchy so you can see. Colors seem to be a little bit darker here on Scratchy. Like the blues, for example, it seems one shade darker than the blue that we got here on the nose of Itchy. Also the same for the ears. This one does also have, as you can see, some additional sculpting there on the side or the back of the head. Has these extra little hairs that stick out. Of course, you got the pointed ears on the top for the cat. Just a nice looking head sculpt. Down below, of course, let's just reach to the side here and grab ourselves Itchy. Bodies are very similar in design. Uh, where there would have been, of course, the blue here on Itchy is gone now when we look at the Scratchy. But the Scratchy and Itchy both still share those silver rivets that they have on the top. Uh, the arms are also very similar in color, as well as the legs. Now again, with the legs, just to put down Scratchy here for one second. He also does have a posable tail too, which, if you're not careful, does sometimes get in the way of things. Just to get him to stand here. Yeah, Itchy. It, poor, poor Itchy's legs. Let's get him to stand up here. Yeah, when we had a look at Itchy, I mean, you can already see just for the little time that I've actually had this guy in the box, his knees have gotten loose, his ankles have gotten loose. I mean, not to the point where I could probably shake it back and forth and you can see it's wobbling, but it's already starting to develop the looseness here, here, and of course here. So that's not going to help at all when it comes to this guy to stand. So I'm going to want to just make sure I lean him back just a little bit. And also in the review that I did of uh, Itchy, I keep wanting to confuse the two. When we had a look at Itchy, Itchy fell forward so many times, in fact, that the paint actually chipped off the front of his face. Luckily, that has not happened yet when we had a look at Scratchy. Scratchy, I don't think I actually has even fallen yet. Oh, gee, I just jinxed myself by saying that. But for the articulation here on Scratchy, it's pretty much going to be the same. So you have the head on the ball joint, so it rotates all the way around. I, I knew I didn't get it all the way on there. Hinges up and down, making sure, of course, I got it all the way in there. The, the arms do come out. Now, unlike Itchy, who had loose legs, Scratchy's legs are fine, although I've noticed here on, on Scratchy's arms, they're a lot looser. Should not really be the case when you get these figures immediately out of their box that you're already starting to contend with loose joints. <sighs> Anyways, the arms do come out. I would say at a 90 degree angle bend, you can take those arms. You can also rotate them all the way around. I want to make sure I got the joint right here all the way around a single hinge joint only on the, on the elbow, but you can also rotate that forearm and you can rotate the hands all the way around. The waist does swivel. And when you are rotating it, you also want to make sure the tail, because the tail actually sticks further down. There's seems to be almost like a little wheel on the bottom of it, but the tail sticks further down than the legs. That's not going to help at all. So you want to just make sure the tail's a little higher up than the legs. That's going to cause a little bit better stability problems or stability fixings of that. Anyways, for the legs, the legs go forward. The legs go, well, let me just move the tail out of the way here. Legs go back only about 45. They move forward about 45. There's a single hinge only in the knee. And there's a single hinge only in the ankle. But you take all those three things and you add them up. And what would normally give you a very articulated figure will eventually give you, unfortunately, a somewhat loose figure. Not necessarily the case yet with Scratchy, but it's certainly been the case already with Itchy. I'm going to also see, uh, you can already see like how loose that's starting to develop. I'm going to see if maybe there's a way to tighten up the joints. I've heard floor polish. I've heard also you can take a little bit of hairspray. Um, I, I might even see if I can try to tighten up the joints. It hasn't even happened yet on Scratchy, but I'm going to see if also I can tighten up the joints on that figure. Because I'd like to have both of these figures on display. And if I have any idea from what we've seen here with Itchy, it's going to be a problem eventually for Scratchy. I may want to fix that problem before it starts to develop. Just because Super 7 sells these separately doesn't mean you have to display them separately. And I would imagine anybody that's picking up the one is going to be picking up the other one and have them displayed together. One thing I've got differently done here in final looks is I've got Scratchy with his removable faceplate off. And I've got actually Itchy with his just defaulted head sculpt. I might, the longer I'm looking at this, decide I'm going to just display Itchy with also the head sculpt that has the removable dome. Because I don't want to have to keep going back to the box and deciding later. I want the head sculpt that has a removable dome and then go back to the box, remove the head, put the original head back in the box. I might just decide, even though it's a little bit more visibly aware that something does remove on Itchy, I'm going to have, I think, both figures displayed with the removable option because then there's a little bit of extra stuff going on with the figures. I can go up to them from time to time, remove things off of their bodies. I think that's one nice touch that they did do with these figure releases. To be honestly fair, I mean, Super 7 probably could have just released these figures with only the one head sculpt alone and just given the option available where then you can just take the head off, you can take the front of the face off and not necessarily throw in the extra head because really, to be fair, the head sculpts are exactly the same. Itchies look a little bit more obviously different, but other than that, they are exactly the same to one another. I think honestly, Super 7 could have easily gotten away with just using one head sculpt for a scratchy, one head sculpt for itchy and calling it a day. 
In fact, if anything, the saving of the plastic probably could have gone instead to a display stand, which I finally just gave up hope with actually having Itchy standing on his own. This figure has fallen more times than I can count. I've ended up just using a McFarlane display stand. So if you are interested, they are using the same diameter pegs as regular display stands you would get with like a McFarlane toy release, for example. And McFarlane toy display stands... I mean, the DC logo stands are probably the best one to go with because you don't really see a lot going on in the stands. It's just a black circular stand. It really is the best for holding and displaying the Simpsons figures. I haven't had to do it with Mo, and I haven't had to do it with Deep Space Homer. But I'm definitely going to have to display that with both Itchy and Scratchy. Scratchy doesn't have the problems yet, but if it's anything, a telltale indication of what we got with Itchy, it's probably going to be something that's going to start to happen, start to experience the same joint issues in Scratchy. It's just a shame that the way the joint systems are. And, you know, to look at the figures, I'm thinking to myself, well, what, what other thing could they have done? The legs are normally lean and very thin anyways in the cartoon. What would they have been able to do? I mean, other than maybe just removing the articulation altogether in the knees, I know it loses one bit of articulation, but it means at least that the figures are going to have an easier time to stand. What do you guys think of these figures? And have you had any problems with either one of these, the itchy or the scratchy? If you pick them up for yourself, let me know if you've had any issues with the joints or maybe I'm unfortunately just the only one. Also as well, if you guys are interested to pick up any one of these, the Itchy, the Scratchy, the Mo, or the Deep Space Homer, they are available as of right now over on Entertainment Earth's website. I can provide the links down below in the video description if you guys are interested to pick up the first wave for yourself. We are only four figures down of the possible five. I, as of right now, Poochie is still on his way to me. So eventually when Poochie does arrive, we will be looking at him in an upcoming review. So he does technically make up the fifth figure from the first wave. But what do you guys think of this wave? Let me know down below in the comments section. I mean, again, I've been kind of just lukewarm to the whole experience of it. I like the look of the characters but I think the wrong choices have still been made by Super 7 to choose specifically Robot Itchy and Scratchy for a line that we don't know has longevity. If I already knew that this line was going to be guaranteed like 11, 12 waves, then yeah, okay, throw in Itchy and Scratchy. But if this is something that gets canceled four or five waves in, was it really necessary to get Robot Itchy and Robot Scratchy from Itchy and Scratchy land? I, I don't I don't think so. But let me know down below in the comments section. And also as well, if you enjoyed this video, hit with a like. If you're loving the content you guys are seeing and certainly do want to stick around for more, then make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and that you're turning on the bell notification so you're going to get reminders every single time a new video posts. We might just take a bit of a break from Simpsons for right now while we're waiting for Poochie to arrive, but there will be other reviews, of course, coming your way. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.